This is the Mosh Pit Backstage Podcast for punk, metal and rock interviews and segments. Robbie Barker is guitarist from the American progressive metal band The Contortionist, who will be releasing their fourth studio album, Clairvoyant, on September 15th. Robbie, thank you so much for joining me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Now, how did you go about writing this album? Uh, well, we spent about the last, uh, well, I guess, year before we were in the studio, um, just sort of working on our own and compiling ideas, um, sending a few things back and forth to each other online. Uh, at the time, most of us were living together, so it was pretty easy to work on stuff at home. Uh, but one of our uh, one of our guys lives in Atlanta, and at the time he was away, so we we did we did a lot of stuff. Uh, just sending ideas to each other online and whatnot. Um, and at some point last year, we decided to head out to Maine, uh, which is the the furthest uh, northeastern state in the United States. Um, our singer Mike is from there. We found a nice area, pretty secluded, uh, where we sort of rented this cabin and uh, spent about a month up there uh, writing together, uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, being able to write in a secluded environment and whatnot. Um, and then after that, we had about a month off uh, where we sort of continued working on stuff on our own. And then I believe it was January of this year, we uh, started recording with uh, Jamie King in North Carolina. Um, how, do, how do you personally go about writing music? I guess uh, a couple different ways. I, I always usually try to keep it light. I find that for myself, uh, if, I, if I'm trying too hard, it's going to be a pretty uh, fruitless effort, if you, if you know what I mean. Um, so I, I, try to, I try to keep it light and... Uh, get myself into sort of a, some people call it a state of play, where you're kind of just, you know, playing with music and you're not taking it too seriously and not being overly judgmental about what you're writing. That kind of helps uh, once you get in the group of, of writing in that way, it kind of helps you get into a you know cycle of writing as much music as you can. Uh, in the shortest amount of time possible. Uh, and just it's more of an effective way to write music, I think. As opposed to just sitting sitting there and bashing your head up against the desk and not coming up with anything, which is how uh, I used to be. This album, it kind of, I think, continues in the direction of language, which, um, for me, is really was really the one of the albums that made 2014 really magical, uh, you, you sort of seem to be kind of moving more away from the abrasive riffing, kind of uh, keeping the technicality in a kind of subtler ways. What's kind of influenced this shift? Why have you kept going in that kind of direction? Uh, well, I, I guess as a band, we've sort of been uh, trying to improve our songwriting um, we, you know we our, our older music we, we came from uh, we came from music that was very like like you said abrasive and chaotic and kind of all over the place and uh, over the years we've all sort of uh, come to appreciate really you know really well written music uh, whether it's pop music or metal music or whatever we all really learn to appreciate, you know, good songwriting. And, uh, so that, that was, 
was something that we definitely are shooting for more than we did in the past. And I think that sort of was one of the, uh, you know, leading uh, attributes to uh, a lot of the new music. Now, your past work uh, is very thematic, very conceptual, um, it's kind of run throughout the album, even if it's not just one single theme or concept focused on. Is, is there any kind of themes or concepts running through this album? Um, well, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know if I can speak uh, as to what they are exactly, but... Uh, in my perspective, um, this was a much, I guess, darker record than language. Uh, to me, language is, you know, pretty uh, uplifting, and you know, the lyrics were based heavily in, I guess, spirituality or new age thought or whatever. And uh, this one seems to be a little bit darker. Um, I know Mike has written a couple songs about a friend of his who has passed away. Um, so I think it's a it's a quite a contrast to what language was uh, conceptually in that regard. The last track in the album, Monochrome Pensive, uh, I think, I believe it's your longest song to date. W was that your intention with writing that track, that it be nearly 10 minutes? Actually, no. Um, and that was actually the, the last song that was written. Um, for the record, I, we, we, had, uh, we had Monochrome sort of arranged as one song. Uh, at one point, we, we originally didn't plan on that, separating it into two tracks like we did. Uh, somehow that happened, and uh, you know, over the course of working on uh, part two of uh, Hensu, we came up with more material than we I think we realized we had. And uh, you know, I, I remember at one point looking at the you know, the, the time code or whatever in the in the recording session and thinking, like, wow, we're, this is a very long song. And, we, you know, we hadn't even really thought about it until that point. So it was, it was really... A, and that song kind of has a... Set of, well, a few elements from uh, a couple of the other tracks. Um, there's a song right before that called Return to Earth. And there's a piece from Return to Earth that is in... Uh, and then there's another piece from one of the other tracks. I forget what it is. But, so that the last track kind of serves as almost a kind of a conglomerate of uh, a few different musical aspects of previous tracks on the record. With that, with taking elements from previous songs, motifs, and repurposing them, as well as uh, kind of the idea behind language rediscovered how do you kind of reuse ideas without simply repeating them um uh, well i guess for us it's kind of it kind of goes back to some of our musical influences uh, a lot of you know i was i was way into dream theater when i was a kid they did that kind of stuff all the time. The way that they went about it is kind of, I guess, how we go about it, where you take an element or a couple of the elements of the original and you either, you know, mess with the, the rhythm of it, uh, maybe reharmonize the chord progression or something. You know, you, you, can take, you can take your original melody and keep the original melody the way it is, but completely rebuild the chord into it. Into maybe different keys or have key, key shifts within that progression. Uh, so that there's there's quite a few ways that we would go about it, and I think that's something we probably explore more in the future. Let's talk a little bit about the album artwork for a sec. It's a pretty stark contrast sure. from language. Um, it's language was kind of very warm colors. This is sort of grays and darker colors. H how did this album artwork come about? 
Um, I believe we we chose to go with the same artist who did uh, Exoplanet and Intrinsic, our first two records. Um, we had uh, checked out his website, and, and, it, and it appeared to us at, at some point that he had really kind of grown his uh, abilities and um, just had some really impressive work on his website. So we decided to go with him. And, uh, you know, a couple of us had a phone call with him, and he hired a photographer. And, you know, with, with all the with all the conceptual ideas that, that uh, we had discussed with him, he, he went out with his photographer that he had hired, and they did a couple photo shoots and ended up coming out with some really fantastic-looking um, photographs. And so everything that's in the artwork came from uh, I don't know if it was one single photo shoot or a couple photo shoots, but uh, it, I have to say they did a really great job on it, and it definitely, to me, captured the, uh, the overall sort of vibe of the whole record being darker and not, I don't want to say it's but less colorful album musically than our previous stuff, but it, uh, I guess conceptually, like I was saying, quite darker. Okay. This is like a really kind of weird technical point, but like on the previous albums, you've had um, sort of a title track broken up into like different tracks. Um, wh- why not do that with Clairvoyant? I-, I-, I feel like we sort of covered this, but like why do that with Monochrome? How-, how did that all come about? That you kind of sort of broke the pattern here. Um. I guess really the only reason that happened was because that one track, um, being that, that it was originally one track and it eventually shifted into being two tracks, I guess that's really the only reason for that. Uh, we, there was some discussion when we were titling the tracks about moving away from having a, a part one and part two track because, you know, kind of becoming a thing that a lot of bands in our arena are doing. But since those two tracks shared so much of the same music, um, I think we just decided to go with it. And, uh, you know, it really makes sense just just for the this, this, this sheer fact that you know, both those tracks contain, like I said, a lot of the same music. Mm, interesting. Um, you, you've talked a little bit about before how you aren't a trained musician. Um, like that, I find that really interesting because you're involved in a kind of very technical sort of portion of the genre. How do you get into like this technical music? I, I, uh, I guess if I'm understanding the question correctly, I, I think I think uh, just getting into technical music uh, at an early age was a, was a big thing. Um, and that sort of pushed me personally in the, in the direction of being interested in like music theory and stuff. And in high school, and I, I took some college courses on uh, music theory, uh, just something I've always been interested in. Uh, and for me personally, I try not to get too... I try not to bring the theory too much into the songwriting aspect because that can definitely uh, can definitely cause some roadblocks if you're you know, thinking about the theory too much and less about the feeling or the emotion of the music. Taking Exoplanet and now Clairvoyance, how do you kind of mix them into a set list for a live show that makes sense? Uh well, that's actually something we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. Um, we're not really quite sure yet, to be honest with you, but, uh, you know, there are there are uh, a handful of tracks on Clairvoyant that, um, that do go well with some of our older material. Um, so I guess uh, if we were doing a tour where we were playing 
slightly more older stuff, we would probably stick to the two or three tracks on the new record that went with that. Um, there are definitely several tracks on the new record that just, compared to Exoplanet, is just a different band, in my opinion. So, uh, it's definitely something that uh, we're going to have to put some effort into, but uh, hopefully we'll figure that out. That would be interesting to see. Uh, the Contortionist, their fourth album, yeah. Clairvoyant, is out on September 15th. Robbie, thank you so much for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to the Moshpit Backstage Podcast. You can subscribe to us on iTunes and Omni. To find out more about the show, go to www.syn.org.au slash moshpit. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash moshpitonsyn.org. And follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Mosh Pit Sin. The regular Mosh Pit radio show broadcasts punk, rock, and metal tunes and interviews every Thursday nights on Sin 9.7 on FM and digital radios. Listeners outside of Melbourne, Australia can stream Sin 9.7 online at www.syn.org.au. Thanks to Vintage Ruin for the music. Hi, this is the Muscle from Flash Gun Apocalypse. Hi, I'm Enid from Girls School. I am Phoebe Pinnock from Heaven the Axe. Hey, this is Gary Oldman of the Misfits. Hey, this is Kat Sproul from Horizon's Edge, and you're listening to The Moss Pit on Sin FM. Hi, this is Aina from Leopard. Hi, I'm Virginia Lilly from the band Lilly. This is Ron from 1449. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ali from Eberhead. Hey everybody, this is Charlie Benante with Anthrax, and you are listening to the Mosh Pit on Tips.